Okay, so we just got our line trait chart created with our dice data. So what this represents is 15 dice rolls and um, we're wondering whether or not our process of rolling a dice has improved. In other words, are we more likely to get a five or a six? Now I use this example because inherently we already know some things. When we, we know that when we roll a six-sided die, we have an equal chance of getting a one or a six or anything in between. So we know some things already about our process. And that's what's going to make this a little bit easier to teach. But just by looking at the, the data, sometimes that's kind of hard, hard to tell. For example, some people might look at this and they're like, you know what? It looks like it's trending up, right? Because, you know, we were down here at two or one or whatever, and we moved up to three, went back down to two, and then went up to six. So we're on the up and up, right? Some people might even tell their boss that. But the reality is <laughs> we know we're not on the up and up because we're using a six-sided die. We're not going to get any better and on top of that we know we cannot predict having I mean we could say we're on the up and up if we we're gonna say yeah we know we'll get a five or a six every time after this but we know that's not true because we're rolling a six-sided die so I'm gonna use this example to kind of give a little more detail of how a control chart works because really a control chart you should be able to see right off the bat whether or not your process has improved. So we're missing some things. I'm gonna show you what we call an upper control limit and a lower control limit. So a lot of times these are abbreviated with UCL and uh, so upper control limit and LCL, lower control limit. And what these represent are uh, some limits that we set in place for our data that tell us things about our data. So if something happens Anyway, I'll, ju I'll just show you what they are and we'll get into it. Anyway, what, what it represents is, so I'm going to use a formula and I'm going to take the average of my data, so all of my data here, and I'm going to be actually dragging this down. So I want to add in some absolutes here. If you don't know what those are, we do have some videos on these things, so I would go and check that out. So it's the average and then it's going to be plus the standard deviation. Um, we're going to do with the population because um, we know we're using a whole population of dice rolls here. But um, if you don't know what a standard deviation is, we have some videos on that as well. I would check those out. Um, and if, if you can't find those, just look up what a standard deviation is. It's really helpful to know when you're talking about um, business analytics and, and, and really any type of analytics. You should know what that is. So it's going to be that what the average of all those numbers plus the standard deviation of all those numbers. Okay, and again I'm gonna throw in my absolutes here. So the standard deviation of that and then times three. Now the order of operations tells us it is gonna multiply but I'll throw the parentheses in here just so that nobody gets confused here. So we're gonna do our standard deviation times three and add that to our average. So in this case I have an upper control limit of 8.71 and because I use my absolute values um, there's a reason why normally I mean there's not a different upper control limit for every single dice roll it's it should be the same all across the board that's why I used absolutes because I'm looking at all the same data but to make it look correct in my chart I need to have it on every single row um, now my lower control limit is actually the same thing I'm gonna copy and paste um, it didn't quite use the right data though. I need to switch the column to L. Oops. I'm going to switch these over to L, which is my roll, my dice roll data, right? And instead of adding, I'm going to subtract. And we get negative 1.5. Now, um, there are times when you actually just want to, your lower control limit will be zero. For this example, we're just going to keep it negative for illustration, but we know we can't roll a negative dice roll. So um, it's kind of a, a <laughs> it doesn't really work in real life. It's a theoretical example, but we're just using the dice roll to get the numbers. So let me show you what happens when I add in this, add these control limits into my chart. So uh, I think I have to, there we go. All right, so I need to add in a series. So I click over here on data, add a series, and select my range. I'm gonna select this right here, okay. Then I'm gonna add another series and select my lower control limit. 
Oh, whoops. I don't think I did what I was supposed to do. There we go. Okay. There we go. Get a lower control limit in there. Okay. All right. So the lower control limit and the upper control limit are now within range. And that is, again, that's our average plus or minus three standard deviations. Okay. So what that's telling me is my process is within control because. I am consistently getting results. I can expect to continue to get these results. Now, um, there could be instances when a data point goes outside of our control limits, and that's when something is happening, okay? That's when either our process is improving or we had some kind of anomaly. So we'll go more, in, more into what these control limits mean in the next video.